Welcome back. The objective of this video is to introduce rational functions. We'll explore the domain of rational functions. We'll take a look at horizontal and vertical asymptotes. A rational function is similar to a polynomial function, except it's a ratio of two polynomial functions. And the domain for poly polynomial functions is all real numbers, but the domain for a rational function is going to be restricted by any values of x that cause division by 0. So you hear me say quite often, denominator, don't divide by 0. So our domain denominator, don't divide by 0, will, is something we'll look for. So in our notes here, we're going to say our rational function r of x equals the numerator all over the denominator. So it's a fraction. In finding the domain of a rational function, and here we go, we want to find the valid inputs. So domain is the valid inputs. What can x be? But for rational functions, generally we start by looking at what can't x be? We kind of find the restrictions first. Say, well, x can't be these things. And then we say, well, now the domain is it can be everything else. So finding the domain of a rational function. So domain implies the denominator. Better not or don't equal zero. So domain, denominator, don't equal zero. So let's take a look at our function here. Our denominator is x squared minus 8x plus 12. That can't equal zero. So let's go ahead and factor that guy. Uh, that's going to factor to x minus 6 times x minus 2. And that better not equal zero. So x better not equal 6 and x better not equal 2. These are the values of x that would make the denominator 0 would result in an undefined function. So that makes these guys our restrictions. And then our domain is all the x's from negative infinity to 2 in union with the x's from 2 to 6 in union with the x's from 6 to infinity. That's really not a u there. I don't know why I do that all the time. So, so that's how we find the domain of a rational function. There is some notation we're going to have to follow and understand uh, in evaluating rational functions. How to read these things is listed here. So if we have the symbol uh, x approaches some value a from the left. We are approaching f some particular value. Our x's are approaching some value from the left or the negative side. x approaches a or some x is approaching some value from the right. Now we're coming at it from the right hand side. x approaches infinity. x can approach negative infinity. That's stuff we've seen already f of x is y. That just means our output or our y is approaching some particular value. Uh, our y is approaching infinity, okay, which means it would be going up to positive infinity. And y approaches negative infinity would be going down to negative infinity or increasing and decreasing without bound according to our notes. Let's take a look at horizontal and vertical asymptotes. Vertical asymptotes are going to be denoted by how we would write the equation of our vertical line. So that would be written as x equals some a. So, okay, so when we have a vertical line, uh, when we're stu stu studying linear equations, x equals is a vertical line. And the graph behavior will approach the vertical line and increase or decrease without bound. So in our graph here, we do have a vertical asymptote at negative 3. So we would put a vertical asymptote here, that red line. And 
as we approach negative 3 from the left, here as we approach negative 3 from the left, so that we x uh, approaches negative 3 from the left, we would say that is going to positive infinity. And as x approaches negative 3 from the right, from the positive side, we are going to negative infinity. So x approaches a from the left, it's going to be positive or negative infinity. Our a value here is 3, so from the left it's actually negative infinity, and as we approach negative 3 from the right, we're going to positive infinity. Our horizontal asymptote, that's going to be the equation of a horizontal line, so y equals some particular value b, okay, so our equation of a horizontal line. And in our example here, our horizontal line appears to be 2. So we would say x equals 2. And in our notes, the graph behavioral approach to horizontal line is x tends to negative infinity or positive infinity. That is, at our limit as x approaches negative infinity, so as our x approaches negative infinity, the limit of this is approaching 2. And as we approach positive infinity, now we're coming from underneath it, we're also approaching 2. Now these are going to be like 1.99 and 1.9999 and so forth. And these ones are going to be like 2.01 or 001 and 2.0001 and we're going to keep getting closer to 2 but we'll never get there. We can find horizontal asymptotes by looking at the degree of the numerator and the degree or the highest degree of the numerator and the highest degree of the denominator. So if we have an example like y equals x over x, y equals x minus 2 over x squared minus 9, really what we we want to do is ask ourselves, what happens when x gets really, really big? Now we're talking really, really big positive or really, really big negative. So we're going way to the left uh, for negative numbers and way to the left x's for positive numbers. So think big. I mean, 10 is big and 100 is bigger and 1,000 is bigger, but think like a million and a billion and a quadrillion, like budget deficit big. Well, as x gets really big, are the 2 and the 9 become meaningless and this becomes a value between or a battle between x over x squared well the x squared is going to get so much bigger than the x that it's going to going to beat this guy out and this guy this one actually now is going to be getting closer and closer to zero so our horizontal asymptote here when the numerator is smaller than the denominator, we're going to have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. In sample 2, the degree of the numerator is equal to the degree of the denominator. And again, we're going to ask ourselves what happens as x gets really, really big. Well, the, the 1, the negative 1 isn't going to matter. The negative 3 isn't going to matter because we're putting like a billion in for x and squaring it. So even this x is going to lose its influence, and it's going to become a battle then between 8x squared over 2x squared. Okay. So as we, as we kind of take that limit as x approaches positive or negative infinity, these x squareds, well, they're going to battle to a tie. Okay. So what we're left with is 8 over 2, which is 4. So and in this case, our answer is going to be 4. So the ratio of the leading coefficients is going to be our horizontal asymptote. That's y is equal to a over b, or in this case, 8 over 2. And third, the, if the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the no, denominator, well, the graph is not going to have a horizontal asymptote. This is going to, the numerator is going to approach uh, infinity. Um, so we don't have a horizontal asymptote. This, this fraction is going to go towards infinity. Uh, in this case, since the, the 
the um, numerator is only one degree higher than the denominator, we're going to have what's called a slant asymptote. Okay, if we have like a to the n plus 1 over a to the n. So if that numerator is just one degree higher than the denominator, we have a slant asymptote. Finally, in example two, we're asked to find the horizontal asymptotes for the given functions and provide a reason for that. So in our first example, we want to evaluate each of these actually as uh, positive x or negative x gets really, really big. So we're going to go way out on the edges of our, of our world, of our graph, and we want to see what's happening as x gets really, really big, whether it's positive big or it's negative big. What happens to the overall fraction? Well, in this one, uh, we're going to be left with, well, this is always going to stay 1. So the 1 and the 15 aren't going to matter. The 3x isn't going to matter. And this is just be, going to become 1 over 2x squared. And as x gets really big, this is going to get closer to 0. So x to the 0 is less than x squared. This one's going to y equals 0. In B, we're going to evaluate this for 3x minus 3 over x plus 3. But as x gets really big, the negative 3 and the positive 3 don't matter. This becomes 3x over x. Well, the x's are going to battle to a tie, and this is going to simplify to 3 over 1. So our limit as x approaches positive or negative infinity, this guy is going to become 3. So y equals 3. And that's because our numerator and our denominator have equal exponents. And then finally, on the last one, uh, just like we did a moment ago, the 18 and the 5 aren't going to matter. The 3 x's aren't going to matter. And this is going to become, uh, well, it becomes a battle of 3x squared over 3x. But 3x squared is going to win by so much. Uh, this guy is going to go to infinity if we're doing the limit as x approaches plus or minus infinity. So um, this one actually is a slant asymptote. So no horizontal asymptote. And that begins our, or that concludes our introduction to rational functions and vertical horizontal and horizontal asymptotes. And we'll get some more practice with this when I see you in class.